Nice. Hey there, welcome back to the homestead. Today, I'm working on setting up our off-grid um, garden irrigation system. Uh, this is a kit I got online on Amazon. I'll put a link down below. There's also some extra parts that I got. I'll also put links for those. If you watch the tank video, there's an irrigation ditch up there and it feeds this tank. And my garden is not much lower than this tank. So I don't have enough pressure with gravity to give me my drip system the pressure that it needs. So I got this well pump should do, uh, we'll go over that a little bit later and a solar charging system that will hopefully give me the pressure that I need to do a drip system. And basically I can just set it and forget it. So let's get started. Nice. So we got the system all set up. We'll go through it real quickly. Uh, basically what we got here on the front, are, we'll start with the structure. This was just an old uh, crate that I came on a project I was working on with a pallet and uh, sides. So I used one of the sides and I used the pallet. Seemed to work out pretty well. On that is two 100 watt solar panels for a total of 200 watts. Just did some brace in here. Just gonna hold them up. And then those holes are for uh, the wires to come through. Let's take a peek inside. Uh, the kit that I had gotten came with the two solar panels the charge controller and the solar uh, pump or and the well pump along with assorted wires and all that. Um, so we'll check out the, the charger. Basically what it does is it takes the solar panel power and uh, you plug it in here. That charges the battery and also gives power to the load. The load in this case is going to be that well pump. Over here is a timer, 12 volt timer. What that is doing is basically if, if I didn't have the timer, the pump would just run continuously until the battery went dead or uh, we'll go over the setup on this real quick. Uh, the white wire here, this red, and then there's a black back there. That is feeding the timer. It needs a little bit of power to run. So I'm just robbing some power off the load side to give that some juice. And then I'm taking the positive side, this red wire there, and feeding that to the timer. And then off that, that white wire there is running to the pump. And then the um, negative is just this and it just runs all the way through to the pump. So that is the, oh, and then the battery is just a marine grade battery, a deep cell. Nothing too special, just the, uh, I think I did group 24, so 70 to 85 amp hours. Not really too sure how well it's going to work, but I think it should get us where we want to be. At this time, the sun is a little cloudy out there. 
so there's not too much sun out but we are doing 13.2 volts the, the solar panel is charging the battery and then the load is operational but right now because of the timer the pump is not running i just have it on manually off let's go take a look at the pump okay so the way i ran it um through the hole in the tank lid uh, i have a rope the power wire and a half inch drip line hose i pulled the pump out so that we can have a little look it's got a uh, half inch barbed fitting back there oh i put a uh, pipe clamp on there hose clamp uh, also put a rope on there so i'm not tugging on the uh, fitting there or also the power line uh, it's a pretty neat little setup stainless steel they have so many options of this uh, i went with this one because it is a higher gpm uh, 3.2 gpm and i wanted that for more pre um, gallons per minute and also pressure just a quick peek inside the tank what i got here is a float valve uh, basically once the water comes up to a certain level the float floats and turns off the water coming from the ditch up there let's dunk this tank real quick or the pump and we'll fire it up So this has a auto on and off. Might be able to hear it. A little noisy, there's some vibration in there for sure. I did put a pressure gauge on here. So right now I'm gonna turn on the pressure gauge because now it's running to the drip system. And uh, what happens here is it has a lot of pressure. So that gauge goes over to 100, and as you've seen, the needle just went all the way around. Drip system that I have here is set up for 10 PSI, and I wasn't thinking I would even get as much PSI as I'm getting now. But uh, yeah, this is actually a lot better than I thought. I'm actually gonna have to get a regulator, so yeah. Let's go take a look at the drip system. So now I got the drip going, and now it starts to rain. What I'm doing here is I'm gonna do two, two separate zones. There is nine beds. I'm going to separate them into like four and five. Two lines running this way. I haven't set these beds up yet, but I really wanted to see how this thing worked. So I did set up these four beds here. The material that I'm using for the drip system is known as drip tape. I guess they call it that because it lays flat. And it has these little slits right here. So this setup is designed to do one, uh, 40 gallons per hour per 100 foot. So these are 50 foot beds. Each bed has two lines, which means it has 100 foot of drip line. And then what happens when it gets pressure, which I think these are over pressured for sure, it, round, it rounds up like uh, normal uh, irrigation tubing. What I'm using for the header is just typical uh, black irrigation pipe your standard drip irrigation you know the stuff you get at the home depot or whatever is capable of doing much more pressure i wasn't thinking i was going to have this much pressure so that's why i went with this drip tape setup yeah, you can see it dripping there i'm going to put the camera away because it is raining but i do want to set this setup over here and uh have you watch me so let me uh, see if the rain will pass.
Alrighty, well, that over there is a storm. Got a few more uh, plumbing fittings to set up, so I'm gonna put the camera away before it gets soaking wet. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.